accordance with a decree issued by his honor, the governor, land taxes on the Western territories have been declared delinquent on this day. If such delinquent levies are not received in Williamsburg within a fortnight, the land will be forfeit. Hey! 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 Land taxes on the Western Territory. Hey! 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 hey mister! Excuse me, but that announcement you just made. If you'll be patient for a moment, I'm about to repeat it. Well, I heard it. The, the thing I want to know is what land taxes are you talking about? The taxes the assembly voted in. A shilling, an acre. Oh, would that affect the Kentucky Territory? It would. Well, I wonder why we weren't notified before they had a chance to get to Lincoln. I'm sure I don't know. Perhaps the governor might know, if you'd care to ask him. Well, that's just what I aim to do. The only trouble is, he's not in town. Hear ye! Hear ye! Hear ye! You say those new taxes were voted in by the assembly three months ago? But what I want to know, Mr. Ainsley, is why we weren't notified. I'm afraid I can't answer that question, Mr. Boone. All I know is the couriers were dispatched to the settlements. Well, no courier came to Boonesboro. Well, that's regrettable, of course, but I'm sure the governor will order an investigation when he returns. What good is that going to do us? None, I'm afraid. Either the money's paid on time or the land is forfeit, Mr. Boone. It's that simple. Well, it's not that simple to me. That just gives me two weeks to get to Boonesboro, get the money, and come back here. Well, then I suggest you leave immediately, Mr. Boone. There's nothing further I can do for you. Boone in Williamsburg? Why? I have no idea. The unfortunate part of it is he knows about the taxes. I expect he's on his way home now. I want him stopped. How? Shoot him if necessary. I won't have my plan spoiled now. Kill Boone. I don't know, Ainsley. Why? Oh, well, we'll let Stokes do it. He'll have no qualms about it. But you know the circumstances if you fail. Yes, Ainsley, I know them. Then keep them in mind. With two fast horses, you should have no difficulty in overtaking him. Goodbye, James. Oh. he'll be coming. What makes you so sure? If I were Daniel Boone, and if I were in a great hurry, I'd come this way myself. Yeah, well, you ain't Daniel Boone, mister. Not by a long shot. No, I ain't Daniel Boone. What's the matter, Stokes? You afraid of the great man? I don't see you doing this job yourself. I don't like bushwhacking. Besides, you're getting paid to do it. I'll go and check on the horses. Remember what I told you. I don't want him killed. I just want him slowed down. That ain't what Mr. Ainsley wants. Mr. Ainsley ain't here. You keep it in mind. If you kill him, I'll kill you. Mm -hmm.
Who are you, mister? I have no quarrel with you, or have I? I... I thought you somebody else. What's your name? Stokes. Stokes. I'll remember that in case we meet again. There's a lot of questions I could ask you if I had time. Roll over. What are you gonna do with that thumb? I said roll over. <laughs> you fixing to leave me here all trussed up like this? I figure you'll be able to work your way free in an hour or so. You'll find your rifle down the trail ways. I don't know what you're after. And I warn you, don't make the same mistake twice. <laughs> Never to come to this office. Now, don't get your shirt in the mouth. I made sure that the governor was gone before I come around the back way. I still don't like it. Oh, you ain't gonna like what I gotta tell you either. Boone ain't dead. You fool. You stupid fool. What happened? Well, Dorsey didn't want him killed. Seems like uh, Boone's a friend of his. You were supposed to be taking orders from me, not Dorsey. Yeah, I know that. But you didn't happen to be holding a gun on me at the time. Dorsey did that? Mm hmm. He said he just wanted Boone slowed down, not dead. So I aimed to hit him in the leg. Well, as long as he's unable to travel. <laughs> the last time I saw him, he was traveling real good. I missed him. You missed? Yeah. He uh, moved just as I pulled the trigger. He'd like to kill me afterwards. He's mighty fierce once he's aroused, you know. I suppose you told him everything. Now, you know me better than that. I didn't tell him nothing. Well, that's some consolation anyway. Where's Dorsey now? The last I seen of him, he was heading west. Said he was going to take care of Boone himself. He better had if he knows what's good for him. All right, Stokes. That'll be all. Ain't you forgetting something? Not that I'm aware of. You ain't paid me yet. Oh, I see. Well, maybe I'd better wait and just see the governor, huh? And put a noose around your neck? The way I look at it, there ain't much difference between hanging and starving. You end up dead either way. Get out of here. Thank you, Captain. If you should need me again... You know where to find me. What is it, Daniel? Didn't expect you back so soon. I didn't expect to be back soon. I hope I didn't start you. I have some news that wouldn't wait. You look like you've been traveling real hard, Daniel. Well, I have. Do me a favor. Will you sound that alarm and get everybody in the tavern? We got ourselves a problem. The last man has mighty little time to raise the money and get it into Williamsburg. Otherwise, our land is forfeit. How come we weren't told about these taxes sooner? Yeah. Yeah. I reckon somebody made sure we wouldn't here. Now, I was told that couriers were sent out three months ago. But on the way back, somebody tried to ambush me. Maybe that's what happened to the messengers. Well, who do you reckon is behind it, Daniel? I wish I knew. But if we don't get that money together, we're going to lose the land. In 10 days? Oh, that's impossible. What are they trying to do to us? They're trying to ruin us, that's what. Now, I just don't have that kind of money. And I'll bet I'm not the only one here. If anybody here wants to buy me out, they know where they can find me. Now, Stoner, we're not licked Wait a minute, Daniel. Stoner's right. You break your back. Indians, wilderness, what for? So a bunch of fat politicians can... Clark, listen to me. Sure, we've all broken our backs trying to make something out of this country. But let's not bury it until it's dead. Oh, that's fine talk, Daniel. But where am I supposed to get the money if I don't have it? Well, there's not a man sitting in this room who hadn't helped out a neighbor when he was in a bad fix. And that's the kind of shape we're in. Lord knows there's not a lot of money around here, but some of us have more than we need, so let's start helping each other. Yes, but Daniel, supposing there is enough money between us, what can we do? You know, collecting it'll take a little time. We only have a few days left. You raise that money by dawn, I'll get it to Williamsburg. Look at him. He's about ready to drop in his tracks. Stoner. Wait. Stoner. Did you ever hear Daniel make a promise he couldn't keep? All right, you miserable sod bust and tree chopping victims of tribulation and injustice. As head of the town council, I'm hereby open for business and tax collecting. I'm with you, Timothy. Daniel can do it if anybody can. Well, I'm not... Well, I don't know how we done it, Daniel, but we done it. And if there's an extra penny anywhere in this settlement, I don't know how you'd find it. Oh, you should have seen them. Everybody lends it to everybody else. They'd want to be a regular professor of mathematics to figure out who owes what to who. 
Now, what's going to happen if you don't... I mean, if you can't? I haven't got time to think about it, Timothy. You know, Daniel, there's times I envy you, and there's times I wouldn't be you for all the jewels in the fat king's crown. A very sensible attitude, sir. It's a terrible responsibility being Daniel Boone. Jim Dorsey. <laughs> a long time no see, Daniel. Yeah, at least five years I never thought you'd make it. Ain't you going to introduce me, Daniel? Well, it's Jim Dorsey, Timothy. Timothy? A little bit before your time. Just one of the finest trappers we've ever had around here. Uh, make that the second finest. You know what I'll never forget? Timmy, remember that real hard winter we had about five years ago? Jim here came to my cabin and threw his traps down on the porch. And he said, Donald, farewell. Dodging arrows while stealing beaver skins is a ridiculous way for an educated man to make his fortune. I'm going back where I belong. Looks like you did all right. Well, maybe I didn't make a fortune, Daniel, but I did make enough to buy an old friend a drink. Well, some other time, Jim. I've got some urgent business here. Hope you're still around when I get back. And be sure and say hello to Becky. Well, uh, you don't really have to go at all, Daniel. What? That is the tax money, isn't it? Well, how'd you know about any taxes? Well, that's why I'm here. I'm on an errand for the governor. I'm trying to find out why that courier never arrived. Just what'd you find out, Jim? Nothing. Can't find a trace of him. Does that mean we just have to pay you and not take this money to Williamsburg? Well, no, I'm not a tax collector, but the money still has to be in Williamsburg, and since I'm going back, I could save you the trip. Do you think you'd get it there in time? Possibly. If not, under the circumstances, I think the governor would make allowances. But you're not real sure. Can't guarantee it, Daniel. Well, in that case, I think I'd better take it myself. Whatever you say. You only try and do your favor. And I appreciate that, but we have a lot more to lose around here than you have. Whatever you say, Daniel. And besides, the Tuscaroras are on the warpath. Oh, I hadn't heard that. I didn't know it until last night myself. At least now you know why I feel like I've got to go. Well, at least I could go with you. It'd be like old times again, traveling together. Besides, it would be safer for both of us. Well, thank you, Jim. We're glad to have you company. Timothy. How about those extra taxes, Jim? You must have some idea about them. Just about every penny in Boonesboro is in these pouches. Territory needs money, I suppose. Roads, fortifications. But why weren't we notified? That's a question I can't answer. I suppose the governor will be curious, too. Why only a two-week extension? Don't they know how far away Boonesboro is? I dare to venture that 90% of the legislature has never been west of the mountains. They probably think it's a nice, comfortable carriage ride. I don't believe that. Something else to it. You know a man named Stokes? Never heard of him. Why? He tried to shoot me a couple of days ago. You've been shot at before. I know. But I can't help but think he's wound up in this. Well, let's hope he doesn't try again. If he's that bad a shot, he could miss you and hit me. Well, I guess his horses are rested up. We might as well go ahead. Come on. Somehow I just can't picture you cooped up with a bunch of politicians. Not after all the time you spent out in the hills. Don't you ever miss it? Not very often. I'm a town dweller now. I enjoy the finer things of life. Depends on what you mean by the finer things. Oh, good soft bed, for instance. I don't relish the idea of sleeping on this hard ground again. But as I have no choice, I, I must admit I'm pretty tired. If you get tired enough, the ground feels pretty good. Yeah. Then I think I'll go down to the creek and get one more drink before I turn in. daylight to catch him. You haven't got time for that, Jim. We're just going to have to walk it. Walk it? Don't be a fool, man. You'll never make it traveling by foot. 
I can try. Don't fool yourself for nothing, Daniel. Well, take the money to Boonesboro. I'll talk to the governor. I'm sure he'll grant you an extension. I don't dare gamble on it. Let's get started. We've got a long way to go. Boots in town, five pounds, but they weren't designed for mountain travel. Here, put these on. I've been caught a foot on the trail before. I always carry an extra pair of moccasins. Where'd you get them? Uh, I tried to engine friend at them. Tad assault, string of beads. Tad assault, string of beads. Thank you, Daniel. Hurry up, Jim. We can't waste any time. Well, I'm afraid I can't keep pace with you anyway, Daniel. Well, I'm sorry, Jim. I can't wait for you. You catch up with me in Williamsburg. Up ahead of ways. Maybe you can find it in the dark. They come back. We wait.
this hand it over you wouldn't shoot me for money jim no not for the money in that pouch but you would kill me to keep me from getting to williamsburg why why do you keep talking daniel what difference does it make hand it over come on Food here to take care of you. Something to bandage your foot. There's a spring in the back of the cave if you haven't found it yet. You're not going to leave me here now, are you? You're going to live. And when I come back, you're going to tell me why you tried to keep me from getting to Williamsburg. Wait a minute, Daniel. I'll tell you now. Wait. I haven't got time. Don't go, Daniel. It's cold blooded murder. Don't go. It's murder, Daniel.
knew you'd come back. Although I, I don't know why. Can you travel on that foot? Travel? Where? We're going to Williamsburg if I have to carry you. And you're going to tell me what I'm going to find when I get there. You're going to find that you're going to, you're going to be late for your taxes. And the Boonsboro land is going to be forfeit. Forfeit to who? To a lot of fat, greedy politicians. Venerable members of your legislature. How could you get mixed up in a deal like that? Because, Daniel, I'm an extremely poor card player, and I owe an enormous sum of money to one of the gentlemen. It could ruin me. It cost me my wife. I didn't want to risk that. You've already risked that, Jim. How about the governor? The governor is an honest man. Well, maybe he'd like to know what's going on behind his back. I like honest men, Jim. Come on, let's go. you go on alone. You could still make it if you run all the way. If you don't get to Williamsburg in time to pay those taxes, you won't live long enough to enjoy being out of debt. Come on, Daniel. I'm not trying to scare you, Jim. I'm trying to save your life, or maybe you never heard of gangrene. What are you going to do? I think I'll rig up a travois. I can pull you faster than you can walk. Race, Daniel. You, you, you've lost it. Jamie's told me so much about you. Uh, what is Jamie? Is he all right? He's inside the doctor's with him. Oh, Jamie. 
Oh, Jamie, what is it? Hello, Lydia. Oh, it's nothing. Everything's fine. Just ask Dr. Winters. Nothing indeed. One more day on the trail with this foot. And, uh, if it hadn't been for Mr. Boone here. Do you have any brandy in the house, Mrs. Dorsey? Yes, yes, I do. I'll be going. Daniel. I'm sorry. Sorry. Give that to Boone, my dear. And find him a place to sleep before he collapses. Thank you. I still have some business to attend to. Lydia, I'll take that. Now, oh, where's he going? On a fool's errand, Doctor. I ought to know, because I sent him on it. I'm sorry, Mr. Boone, there is no way I can help you. The delinquent taxes have already been guaranteed by the Transylvania Land Company, and I am presently engaged in transferring the title in their name. If I were you, I'd let that go until I've had a chance to talk with the governor. Well, it wouldn't do you any good. He happens to be bound by the will of the legislature. Well, he might be interested in knowing what the legislature's been up to. I don't think I quite understand you. Well, you will after I talk with the governor. Now, when can I see him? Perhaps sometime next week, if he has any time available. I don't mean next week. I mean today. Now, where is he? In case you've forgotten, Mr. Boone, it's Sunday. I imagine he's in church. Well, I reckon I'll just have to drag him out. As the governor's personal aide, I cannot permit you to invade his privacy. How do you figure on stopping? Mr. Boone, since you seem so determined, uh, I'll contact the governor myself. If you'll return sometime this evening around 7 o'clock, say, I'll guarantee your audience. I'll be back. Oh, thank you, Lydia. Know what you are. What? Never mind. I don't want to turn that pretty head. <laughs> Jamie? Hmm? What did you mean by saying that Mr. Boone was going on a fool's errand and that you sent him on it? Nothing important. Oh. Well, then, if it's nothing important, then why do you look so troubled? Is it your foot, darling? The doctor said you had no cause to worry. No, it's fine. I was wondering what my life would be without you. Why should you wonder that? I'm not going anyplace. I hope not. But don't be ridiculous. Jamie, you know I couldn't ever leave you. It's not so ridiculous. It... Lydia, would you do a favor for an elderly cripple? Oh, I suppose that's you. I suppose. In the hallway there in the cabinet, there's a small strong box. Would you bring it to me, please? Uh -huh. Thank you. It's a rather small receptacle to contain the futures of two people, isn't it? Oh, now you're being quite ridiculous again. No, Lydia, my dear. This, my dear, is Pandora's box, full of all the greed and miseries of the human race, a number of which I shall release shortly. Come in. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Boone. Um... Will you join us in some tea? Lydia, would you please leave us alone? Of course, dear. I'll get a room ready for you. You look exhausted. The answer was no, wasn't it? Who'd you see, Daniel? Uh, Ainsley? I suppose he was terribly sorry. What he said. And I suppose the governor was sorry, too. Well, I haven't seen the governor yet. I'm supposed to see him at 7 o'clock. I reckon he won't believe me either. He'll believe you, Daniel. He'll believe you. I have a present for you. A gift. It's all in here. The whole miserable deal. All. You go get some sleep and bring the governor to me. I would like to tell him myself. It caused you to change your mind, Jim. A man's got to live with himself, Daniel. And I, I reluctantly concluded that my alter ego would prove to be a most unpleasant companion. What about your wife? I haven't told her yet. I don't know how. You see, Daniel, you're a good man. And I'm such a... That's the thing. You saved my life when you had every reason to let me die. And that's it, Daniel. I don't know if I could have or would have done the same thing for you. There's just one thing I, I'd like to ask of you. I don't deserve it. 
I know that. But I'd like it. I'd like to be friends with you again. I'd like that. It's preposterous. I refuse to believe such a thing. I'm not asking you to believe me, sir. All I'm asking you to do is go with me. Mr. Dorsey has the written proof. All right, I'll come with you. Mr. Ainsley, will you call my carriage? Right away, sir. I'm sorry about your settlement, Mr. Boone, but I sincerely hope you're wrong about this whole affair. Come in. Door's open. Governor, what a surprise to see you, sir. I'd offer you gentlemen refreshments, but I'm, I'm incapacitated. My wife's gone to bed. What can I do for you, sir? Well, what is this, Mr. Boone? What kind of a game are you playing? Is something wrong? Well, where's the strong box, Jim? The evidence you were going to show the governor. What evidence? Uh, Boone, I don't understand. What's he talking about? Mr. Boone came to me earlier, Dorsey, and told me that you had evidence of a conspiracy to defraud the people of Boonesboro of their land, that you were part of it, and that you were willing to confess and give evidence to enable me to accept their delinquent taxes. Now, that was what you told me, wasn't it? That's what I told you, and that's what Mr. Dorsey told me. Well, Dorsey? Well, I, I don't know what to say, sir, except that I'm astonished. I can't imagine what you hope to accomplish by this foolishness, Mr. Boone. If it was intended as a joke, it's an extremely poor taste. I apologize, Governor, for my part in the whole affair. Good night, Dorsey. Good night, Governor. Good night, Mr. Boone. I suppose I can't blame you for trying. I'll see you to your carriage, Governor. Good night, Jim. You haven't heard the last of this yet. Congratulate you on a magnificent performance. I think the governor was quite convinced. And give me back my IOUs and have my wife released. All in good time, James. But first of all, you and I should reach an understanding. I didn't want you in on this to begin with, James. I told the others you wouldn't be reliable. But your friendship with Boone was advantageous to us. Taking it all in all, you've been most disappointing. I'm afraid we have no further need of you. What's going to happen to my wife? Well, unfortunately, she knows too much. So I see no help for it but to uh, wish the both of you a happy journey. 
You're going on a long trip. Hold it. Put it down, Ainsley. Jamie. Jamie. I'm all right, Lydia. I'm all right. I, I've never felt better in my life. The one that's going on a little trip, and I figure it'll be for a long time. We'll be back, Jim. We have a little talk with the governor coming up. Mm -hmm. 